Uh, I've had some really good success here in Britain. I think it's because it's not been, for the, la the last three years, I've been like concentrating in other countries like America and Europe. Um, but here in England, I've had a couple of gold albums, uh, about uh, four top ten singles. In America, I've been number one, number three, number five, sold around two million, three million albums in America. I've, I think overall, worldwide, I've sold about ten million albums now. I've got about 25 gold and platinum discs. Is the page three tag something you'd like to shake off, or does it not worry you at all? Not really. It doesn't. Um, because that only really happens here in England. And because it was, I was so successful at it, and I think became the best page three girl, um, I just look, at, I look back on it and think, wow, what an achievement. But there's it's a big world out there, and in the other countries, they just see me as a singer. If anything, like when I broke America, they would ask me to do modelling jobs. They, they, would, they said to me, gee, have you ever thought about being a model when I got there? And I said, I've just been a model for five years, thanks. And I'm now concentrating on a singing career. A little while back, the media had a field day with what they described as you finding God. What was the truth of that situation? And did you decide to go public or were you outed? Well, um, the truth of that was is I didn't suddenly find God. Um, I've always believed in God. And I've always been a Christian, and I've always had a, I've always been a very spiritual person, and my faith is quite strong. But what um, it was kind of blown out of proportion in the way that um, I was photographed coming out of church one day, and I was, I can't really say the newspaper, but they they said to my management if I didn't talk about my newfound faith, that they would print that I was going to a cult thing, some sort of dodgy cult business thing. So I did, I, I talked about, my, I just said that. Um, that the last, the last three years have been quite difficult for me, where my management was concerned and my mum becoming quite ill, that there was something missing in my life. And um, this particular church I went to was alive and it just made me feel good and it gave me a sense of peace. I haven't really changed as a person. I'm still Sam, because everyone is expecting me to sing some gospel stuff or something like that, but I still sang my hits like Touch Me and I even sang Naughty Girls Need Love Too, because they do. So that... It kind of it created a lot of publicities and afterwards everybody wanted to talk to me in the media so I thought let's just get this done and over with and I did a press conference and talked about it. And has your faith remained important to you? Oh yeah. Um, every day I think about God and um, every day I pray because I really know the importance of prayer now. Um, I know that when I first started going two years ago my mum was really ill and we, I used to get together with a group of friends at the church and we used to pray for her and all I know is that she got better <laughs> and my prayers were answered. We're just a few days away from the Song for Europe contest. What are your feelings whether you win or whether you lose? Well if I lose, obviously I was meant to lose, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Um, but if I win I can just say um, I was meant to win, you know. And what are your plans for the future for your pop career? Well, um, the good thing about Song for Europe is that it's a great relaunch for me, and especially being really successful in Europe and in Britain. It's a great relaunch, and so the song will still be a single. It'll be coming out on, the, on Monday, and then we'll bring an album out. So I'll just carry on with my music as normal, really, and then tour around Europe, and then probably go back to America and do a big stadium tour there. Sam, so we wish you all the best of the future. Thanks very much.